Maros Shevchovic. Mr. Prime Minister Viktor Orban, the floor is yours. Mélyen tisztelt elnök úr, először is szeretnék köszönetet mondani a... President, members, first of all, I'd like to thank all members who have been so good as to contribute to this debate. It's a very interesting debate and uh, one full of many interesting aspects. And there were so many interesting aspects that uh, I can't really reply to everything, including uh, the one-minute speeches. But I'll have to try and focus in and reply to certain ideas which were put forward. First of all, with my Hungarian Prime Minister's hat on, let me say how surprised I am that so many very serious uh, ladies and gentlemen, respected personages, have actually uh, thought it worth taking the floor, uh, but basing themselves on mistakes. I think that would be unworthy, not just uh, of myself, but also of you, uh, to actually go through all the mistakes uh, which uh, were actually made with respect to democracy in Hungary and the media law. I'll just give you an example, though, to illustrate what the mistakes are. In the Hungarian media law, there's no sanction foreseen and no fine foreseen for unbalanced reporting, put it that way. But there are many other examples which I could refer to. And it's a pity that uh, you are perhaps uh, misled or all along the wrong track in this discussion. And I can clearly see uh, that it's very difficult for me to get fair treatment in, this, in the terms of this debate. But I do put my faith in the Commission, who I hope will come to a solution for this problem, a solution which I will accept and I will take measures uh, as already mentioned. And I think we have to do some real thinking about what Mr. Schultz said. It's not on the basis of uh, the programme, uh, but actually what we do, our performance, where you will gauge us as a Hungarian government. And I think the same principle should go to the media law uh, which has been in effect for the last two, year, uh, two weeks. I'm ready to send you on articles uh, uh, and media reports, and you can conclude that the eloquent words of Mr. Cohen-Bendit are very uh, innocent compared to a lot of the criticism uh, which has been uh, levelled against us in the articles I send you, say, from uh, the German press. All sorts of huge accusations have been moved against us, but look at us on the facts. You've been living in uh, an information society, you live in a current information society, where uh, you can see the internet coming under oppression. We won our elections on the basis of a freedom flag. How do you think we'll be able on that basis to stop the free flow of information? We live in this current uh, century, the 21st century, and the law uh, concerning the media, which you criticise so, so strongly, is replacing a law dating back to 1986, which was adopted within the communist system at the time. And then it was possible just to delete newspapers and uh, media vectors from a register if you didn't like people, if you thought that people had uh, spoken against you. So I think let's get off uh, feet back on the ground. Let's be aware of reality and, and speak uh, informed by the spirit of reason. Just look at the facts. 
Uh, many opinions have been raised here, but I can actually confirm to you that the rule of law in Hungary is currently being reconstructed. Uh, you may have had discussions in your own parliament uh, uh, recently saying that the secret services have been used in an abusive way in Hungary, that the police has intervened to stop uh, demonstrations and legal cases and procedures are underway linked to all this. But measures were undertaken under the uh, previous government which did squarely go against democracy and the rule of law. And I got the impression that for you um, uh, uh, it was different. It's not really the law concerning the media which bothers some of you, but the fact that the Hungarian government has got together, or, or the Hungarian people got together and voted through a new government with a two-thirds majority. Maybe that's the thing which bothers some of you. And I will obviously use this majority to do the necessary uh, for the European Union. Mr. Graf Lansdorf, uh, you, you made a personal comment there. I'm speaking to you as a European, as a Hungarian. Um, your law on the media is no longer uh, democr democratic. And I certainly don't think it's more than ours. If you contest that, please put it in writing. I don't think your writing, your accusation is well conceived there. We lived, remember, under dictatorship for 40 years. And I will not stand for you contesting the democratic aspirations of the Hungarians. A media törvényt, a media törvényt természetesen lehet. The law on media obviously uh, can and should be criticised, and I think that's just the normal course of things. Speaker stops. You cannot just go about wounding uh, uh, and offending uh, uh, people in this way. It's an offence against the Hungarian people. Well, at the end, at the end, and allow me to uh, refer also to what's been said uh, by people who've accused Hungary of taking steps towards dictatorship. Oh, I heard what you said. You threatened our country. Uh, you're saying that we're taking steps towards dictatorship. What is that other than an offence, a slap in the face of the Hungarian people? I will always defend my people. I will always defend my country. It's not a question just of a media bill or a media law. As for European issues, I will now put on my European hat, if you'll allow me to. I think that it's important that we talk about the bond market. Uh, Mr. Verhofstadt mentioned that. And I would say to you that setting up uh, a bond market is considered to be necessary in the long term, inevitable uh, for the Hungarian presidency. And uh, European policies which lead Hungary and other member states of the European Union uh, into the Eurozone will also be supported. That's another thing. We support those policies. We we'll also note that we have to persuade our national governments that a Eurobond market should not be used to uh, save on structural reforms and not do those. So first of all we've got to have our structural reforms and then immediately uh, ensuing, uh, set up, uh, or it will be possible to set up a bond market. Now, Tunisia, I'll be so bold as to say to you that we are in ongoing uh,
talks with diplomatic representations uh, there, and we support all the democratic aspirations and hopes uh, above, well, outside of the European borders. So we support them anywhere. And I would like to say, without being misunderstood, and quite clearly, that uh, this should not be confused with uh, the fight against oppression of Christians throughout the world. Persecution of Christians has to be stopped, but they are two distinct issues. So maybe this is a, a, a stormy start to Hungarian uh, presidency. I hope it doesn't have a bad effect or cast a shadow over the term of our presidency. I'd like to say, uh, well, whether it does or not will depend basically on you. Uh, I and we are ready to carry out the two debates, the Hungarian and the European uh, debates, on two levels, if you like, and follow them on two levels. If you want to have a, a, a Hungarian debate and a European debate at the same time, well, we're ready to meet you for that too and have it that way. We do not feel that this situation should be uncomfortable, though. We, we shouldn't be worried by it. In fact, we're very happy to see that both sides are going to be discussed. We're, but we don't really want our internal affairs to be mixed with European matters, but we're ready to do so if you wish to debate it in those terms. Never thought that Hungarian presidency would be comparable to a fashion show or a regatta where you always get applauded at the end of the particular queue of wonderful things. We're already always ready to debate all topics you deem important, always. Hungary will give the necessary weight and focus to uh, discussions on Hungarian issues, yes, and on European issues, yes, too. And no attack against the Hungarian situation will deflect our attention from European priorities, will give them their just uh, focus, and we hope we'll succeed. Thank you very much, Mr. Prime Minister. Now, ladies and gentlemen.